Hey, story fans. It's your old pal, The Writing Ref. I don't hate, I just officiate your favorite Star Wars TV shows. Well, um, maybe I hate a little bit. Um, actually, that hate's not the right word. Uh, depressed, maybe? Um, so I need some extra depressant to help me through this. Um, yeah, so it would really help my sanity if you would share this video, because I have a lot of penalties to call on this show. Like and subscribe for more, because we're going to be talking about this as uh, the rest of the series comes out, all to the eighth episode, and see if it uh, makes it less depressing. But first, cue the intro. Why did you say that, nerd? It's his mother's name. That's a lot of fish. I'd like to address the bantha in the room. I'm not depressed about the show. Alkali is quite good. It's got a little unorthodox storytelling, non-linear storytelling, flashbacks, all things that aren't typically in Star Wars, but it feels 90% Star Wars. For people that say they could add some more John Williams music to it, and I agree. They need to do that with all the shows. And I've got a couple penalties to uh, call on it. But first... I am depressed about the fan base being once again divided. Now, Star Wars fans have always had our divisions, from fighting over whether or not we thought Vader was Luke's real dad, Empire Strikes Back, to whether or not we liked Return of the Jedi, to the Phantom Menace, all of it. But recently, with the Disney Star Wars, there's been a new sort of villain raising its ugly head, and that... There is a great disturbance in the Force. I have felt it. We have a new enemy. And that has been this sort of argument with political undercurrents of wokeness and the forces female t-shirts getting on people's nerves and Ray being a Mary Sue and all of this. Listen, if diversity bothers you, it's not going away. Uh, if woke ver go woke, go broke is true, like for some franchises, you're hoping to get people fired and restart everything and reboot everything. That's not going to happen with Star Wars. You make Star Wars go broke, it'll just go away. Disney will be perfectly happy to make bazillions of dollars off their theme parks for Star Wars. Hold on to the IP by doing books and comics. Maybe a cartoon every now and then that most of you that are making these complaints will never watch. And it'll leave TV and movies. Star Wars will be gone. Congratulations. So if that's what you want continue to try to make Star Wars broke. On the other hand, there is a line of criticism that we can all get behind, that we can all unify behind, and that is to have creators take the vision of George Lucas seriously. But first, before we get into talking about that, let's talk about the penalties. Oh, well, all right. I was about to call some penalties, or I did do a recording of several penalties that I called. And, uh, for some reason the audio didn't work. So we didn't finish the video for, uh, after episode three. And now we're past episode four. Which, unfortunately, called for two more penalties. I was out of the Jameson. Uh, the show is gonna be bad for my liver. A little rum and coke action to call these penalties. You'll notice that uh, I also had a slight surgery, and I found my old hat. First penalty. Suspension, suspension of disbelief, of disbelief ruin. ruin. Usually, something that breaks your suspension of disbelief doesn't ruin the whole story for you. But this first death, after this first fight, almost ruined the whole show for me. I've seen other YouTubers who only watched the first episode and didn't watch any more. And I think it had a lot to do with this, and no one could put their finger on what was wrong. But you have a Jedi Master here that gets killed by having a knife thrown at her. Now there's a lot of ways that in the comics that Sith and non-Sith 
dark side users have gotten the best of Jedi. Be it in a <clears throat> lightsaber fight where they took advantage of the surroundings or trickery and subterfuge. But here it is a situation where a Jedi has a lightsaber in hand. A Jedi Master, not a Padawan, not something below a Padawan. A Jedi Master against a character who is laughed at for their ridiculous challenge. Attack me with all your strength. And then suddenly throws a knife at a bystander and is able to throw a knife at uh, the Jedi and get it through. Now, some people bought that, but I have yet to find a very hardcore Star Wars fan that wasn't making excuses for this moment through some kind of cognitive dissonance. Because really there's no excuse for not coming up with a better way to murder a Jedi besides acting like an idiot. The whole purpose of the scene until this moment seems like that there is this kid who's out for revenge who's going to be out of her depth. And then all of a sudden she succeeds. And I just, it's like a complete subversion of what the scene was telling me it was supposed to be. Uh, the show is just off to a bad start at that point. There were several other instances that I could have called penalties on that uh, broke suspension of disbelief for a lot of people. One of them was the old fire in space complaint. That's weird. What in the? Oh not at all! This is not canon! That seemed to get on a lot of people's nerves. I found it defensible, but I won't defend it here. And second of all, the fact that someone survives a spaceship crash by making sure they're buckled in. Another happy landing. What, like it's hard? <laughs> Plausible, but it took a lot of people out of the moment. Caused them to lose their suspension of disbelief. Another thing that caused suspension of disbelief loss is when Mai goes to kill the second Jedi, well, Mr. Meditation, he is, first of all, he's got a bad makeup job. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> returns to kill him with poison and they make a point of showing you this guy realize that someone had breached security and so they don't beef up security maybe they're jedi and they just think they'll sense it or maybe the guy meditating wants her to get in because he kills himself anyways i almost called a penalty on her using poison and them saying that poison that she killed him with a weapon but i guess you could say that poison is a weapon even though she didn't kill him maybe that's the technicality uh, I thought it was very Sith-like that she got guilt for a Jedi to kill himself. But apparently that's not a point of the lesson, because they say this is not a test, but it's a lesson in Episode 4. So the most egregious penalty is this one. Let's go to the field. <whistles> Protagonist makes a dumbass, dumbass decision, 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 decision to extend, to extend the plan. Now, in this moment, May and Osha are realizing that they are both still alive and instead of stunning her sister and capturing her so she can ask all sorts of questions that she probably wants answered she misses on purpose not only does she miss on purpose she misses with a stun beam they show us that it's a stun beam i could understand if it was like a blaster that didn't have settings set for stun because in theory she wants to fool the jedi into thinking she tried to capture her sister. But why wouldn't she want to capture her sister at this point and ask her questions? 
It is a stun beam. It's temporary. You showed us that. If this were a movie or even a four episode miniseries, you stun that character. And there is a lot of talk about Rashomon, uh, the Kurosawa type film, influencing this show. You're doing a disservice to Rashomon by having episode three be your flashback and not your start, first of all. Rashomon starts out with the murder, the event. When another cap character is captured that is a different suspect, then they, then they rewind and show uh, a different perspective. So here would be you, the perfect opportunity for this story would be to start with episode three, go through these events, capture May, and then have May show her side. But we're trying to extend this story unnaturally to make it eight episodes long, when really a Rashomon story is a much shorter story. In fact, it's based on a short story. So you're getting yourself in trouble by having your character look dumb to extend your plot. The third penalty is the most controversial and the most important. For a lot of people, this ruins Star Wars, but not for me, necessarily. This penalty can be woven off with a red flag, if they do it right. The penalty is this. Let's go to the field. Essential, Essential Star, Star Wars, Wars theme. theme. Stabbed, Stabbed in the, in the gut. gut. The essential theme being... Control over nature is bad. I carried them. I created them. Huh? She created them? And what happens if the Jedi discover how you created them? I be elf. To use the Force to influence the midichlorians to create light. Plagueis! Nah, nah, the alchemist is Plagueis. <laughs> You're right, Anakin. Because you weren't the only one who was conceived by the Force. My dare got around. <sighs> this idea that some people on this show, creators and actors alike, have that there's a gray area for Star Wars that is not light and dark, good and bad, uh, is incorrect. I mean, the best parts about Star Wars is there is no good or evil. It depends on what side you're standing on, truly. You know what I mean? That you can look at any angle and see yourself relayed through all the characters, Darth to Luke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but this show, yeah, I shouldn't use, per, you know, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. I'm sorry, that's, I'm too casual with that. Um, this show is truly about that balance of power and balance of good versus evil and realizing that so much of it, you know, starts at the root, truly. Conflict between good and evil is the basic conflict. The universal question is, am I a good person? Through mythology and things, we're taught certain things that are good and certain things that are bad. But a thinking person questions all that. Say, is this really good? Am I really doing the right thing here? Am I really being a kind, compassionate person? Because to me, it's really about a compassionate person as opposed to a selfish person. We all have good and evil in us because we have the selfish side of us and we have the compassionate side of us. The idea is how do you keep those things in balance? And by keeping those things in balance, you can do a lot of good things. The one time that it was done appropriately to have blurred morality was in Andor. I've given up all chance at inner peace. I made my mind a sunless space. I share my dreams with ghosts. I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago from which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. When you're talking about normal human conflict of rebellions and empires and how politics changes and that sort of thing, there can be gray areas in that. That's why there's always been politics in Star Wars. When you're talking politics, there is room for interpretation. That's why the Andor series was so good at that. But when you're telling mythology, when you're dealing with Jedi and the Force and the Sith, there's not a gray area. There's not a, well, maybe the Sith are right about this. The Jedi can have hubris. They absolutely have hubris. Uh, but that's a bad thing. So when you are taking the point of influencing midichlorians, which to George Lucas 
were the ambassadors for nature to the force when you're controlling them you are making a dark side act this show paints the manipulation of the force to create life as an act of love could it be that in the real world sure but we're not telling a real world story when you're dealing with immaculate conception you're telling a mythology so what we have here is a gross thematic misunderstanding of Star Wars if they do not make this a dark act, the creation of these children. If it remains an act of love, that's a huge penalty. But if they can demonstrate why control of nature in this way is dark, then I'll throw a, then I will accept a red flag and reverse the call. Now, the fourth and final penalty Oops, I, I can't hide The Mandalorian. One of the examples of a show that in the first two seasons didn't have very many penalties. Uh, they killed off a Wookiee. Every, everyone is hoping to see. Uh, that's a little bit on false advertising, though, rather than the storytelling. Don't build up your Wookiee as this character that everyone's going to love if you know you're just going to kill him off. I'm not excited about seeing... A character in a flashback when the flashbacks aren't very well connected to the story just like I was not excited about seeing Indara uh, when again the flashbacks are not very well in integrated in the story the show has also been compared to Kill Bill meets Frozen I see where they're coming from on the Kill Bill thing but uh, this penalty kind of undoes the Kill Bill thing immediately so let's go to the field character does a heel, heel, heel turn, turn, turn without, without any, any explanation, explanation, explanation or, or, or audience understanding, understanding or build-up. Build build May, in the fourth episode, is tromping through the woods, happily Lord of the Rings style, and all of a sudden decides she's going to trap her accomplice and turn herself into the Wookiee Jedi. What are you doing? You overreacted? Is that your explanation? No, I didn't say I was going to explain myself. I said I was going to tell you the truth. But if that's too cryptic, let's get literal. I'm a killer. I'm a murdering bastard, you know that? And there are consequences to breaking the heart of a murdering bastard. Was my reaction really... That's surprising. What I'm going to do is surrender myself to Kelnaka and then turn myself into the Jedi. No, 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 stop, stop. Now, we may learn something later that helps make this make sense. Or, uh, some people have pointed out she could have been uh, attempting to bait her accomplice into accomplishing the mission for her. Or some other reason. She could have been lying that this was her purpose. But if that were true, they wouldn't have needed to kill off Kilnaka before she got there. They could have incorporated Kilnaka into this fight that is about to happen that we're probably not going to get to see until after the next episode. When we rewind the story and show everything from May's point of view. But it's not going to help until we see May's real reasoning for this heel turn. Even people that were that are trying to remain positive uh, about this show, which everyone should until it ends, there's a lot of hate flowing. Use your aggressive feelings, boy. Let the hate flow through you. And I commend the people trying to remain positive. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Sometimes there's a little bit of over, over positivity. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Storytelling isn't a, a message so much as it is a perspective, and people will latch on to those uh, ideals. They'll be tricked into doing that. That's the, the wonder of storytelling, it's for people to inherit and, and see from different points of view. But if you do a good story, ideology doesn't matter. When you do a bad story and you're trying to do some kind of ideology, you're doing harm to the point that you want to make. And the reason this isn't hitting so well is because you're taking the mythological part of Star Wars, which is the most important to follow George Lucas's models on of what he wanted for this story. And there's a lot of 
Lucas is great, but we're doing our own thing. And that is a little wrong attitude um, in the major penalty, but it requires its own video essay to go over. So we'll do that next time. I've been the writing ref, and these have been the calls on the first half of the accolade.